Despite some gains in the economy, more people in eastern Massachusetts have trouble keeping up with the cost of food. According to the hunger relief organization Feeding America, 15 percent of the people in Suffolk County are food insecure. To tell us about the numbers and what they mean is our guest from the Greater Boston Food Bank, the director of communications and public affairs, Stephanie Nichols. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Stephanie. Thank you for having me, Chris. Talk about what that means uh, to be food insecure. To be food insecure means that you just don't know where your next meal is going to come from, that you really are struggling to meet your weekly food budget. Uh, the, you know, this study indicated that per person in eastern Massachusetts, people are short $20 a week. So that's $20 less money they have to actually get enough food to eat every week. And if you have a family of four, that's $80. And for a lot of hardworking, low-income people, $80 is just an insurmountable amount to overcome. You just can't get enough food to eat. You said hard hardworking, low-income people. And I guess um, talk about how that contrast with uh, some of the stereotypes out there. People on food stamps, they're not working hard enough or they're faking it or something. About a third of the people that we help every day are people who actually earn too much to qualify for food stamps. So that means they're earning too much to qualify for food stamps, but not enough to meet their basic needs. So, you know, they're working on, at minimum wage jobs and they're working 40 hours a week, but they still have a family and they can't make it. They just can't make it. This is a very, very expensive state, and this area in particular is even more expensive than the rest of the state. So it's very difficult to get by here. You have, you know, very high housing costs, very high, high health care. Uh, high transportation costs. So, uh, you know, all of these forces out, you know, people have to make trade-offs. They're, you know, saying, what do I pay? My rent, you know, so that I don't get evicted or pay a little less for my food, have less, less food. You know, when people have less money for food, they turn to the emergency uh, relief system, you know, of which we, you know, are part of. And, uh, and they at least have uh, some place to turn in that case, you know, you know, if it's versus being evicted or going to the food pantry, you might choose to go to the food pantry. Well, it, it, it's, it's been the case for a long time. Housing is expensive here, health care is expensive. But what about the cost of food? The cost of food, actually, the study that came out yesterday shows that the cost of food actually has increased about 4% in the la just in the last year alone. So, you know, as I said, that may seem, 4% uh, may sound uh, like a small amount, but if nothing else, that you're, if your wages and salary are not going up, then that actually does put you even further behind. You're getting further and further behind. You can't get ahead. So talk about what people do when they're trying to close that gap, because, you know, sometimes I think there are people out there, they might not be underfed, but they might be undernourished. Right, exactly. Well, you know, when you're food insecure, it has really deleterious health effects. People who are food insecure are shown, medical studies have shown again and again, are more at risk for obesity, for heart conditions, for diabetes. They have poor mental health. Um, children are at particular risk. You know, their growth, their development uh, is put at risk. Uh, they are usually, they can be at risk for asthma, anemia. Uh, they also, if they get sick, they get sicker than uh, kids who are food secure. They, if they're hospitalized, they stay in the hospital for a longer period of time than kids who are food secure. So the effects are just, you know, they snowball. And in fact, there was a study that was released in the past year uh, that showed that the cost uh, to the U.S. healthcare system of food insecure people is actually $160 billion a year. So it's having an effect that people are just unaware of, and it's affecting everybody. I mean, those healthcare costs affect everybody across the board. So uh, these are the kinds of things that, you know, people are facing. This is BNN News. We're talking with Stephanie Nichols from the Greater Boston Food Bank. Uh, Stephanie, uh, you, I guess one of the other goals here at the food bank is not just keep people from starving, but you want to make sure they get healthy food. Um, it sounds like it's not an easy thing to do because it, there's some cost involved in that. Absolutely. You know, uh, most people, uh, that's another reason why people are, have these deleterious health effects because, you know, they're having to make a trade-off if they, uh, you know, they perhaps they want to eat healthily, but they can't. They can't afford it. If you look at the cost of fresh fruits and vegetables in, you know, if you, you know, they always say shop in the outside of the supermarket. Well, those foods are much higher in cost than if you 
get a, a can of green beans or if you get a macaroni and cheese for, you know, $1.99 a package, which, you know, will feed, you know, maybe, you know, three or four people for dinner. You know, if healthy foods are expensive, you know, and uh, so that's just... Um, you know, one of the unfortunate facts of, of this whole situation. I, I remember one time when I had to drive halfway across the city to go to the nearest supermarket. Things are a lot better now. We do have more supermarkets in more mm -hmm. neighborhoods. We have farmers markets. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, so do we still have the problem of the food desert where people are so far away from affordable, good food that we, it's a real problem? We absolutely do, Chris. That is a, a problem in many, many neighborhoods. And in fact, we have a community health center partnership that we uh, launched last year, and it addresses that very uh, issue. That what we do is that with patients in those uh, community health centers, which serve, you know, usually low-income populations, and what we find in those neighborhoods are generally um, food deserts and when we bring a mobile market there once a month and it's just produce only just fresh fruits and vegetables and uh, the one that we have actually in Brighton uh, you know about over a hundred people a month are going there to get their fresh fruits and vegetables because they can't really afford them otherwise well what about the sources of support that uh, back up what you do because I mean some of it from the federal government maybe uh, what about the state well, the state actually, uh, we have the uh, budget line item every year in the state budget called the Massachusetts Emergency Food Assistance Program. It's, it's the acronym is MEFAP. And, uh, you know, this is very vital for what we do. It's actually for, it funds the four food banks across Massachusetts because uh, there's a food bank in Western Mass, there's a Worcester County food bank, and there's one, the Merrimack Valley food bank. So this budget line item is for the food banks of Massachusetts. And last year we were funded at about $17.5 million by the legislature, and unfortunately the governor in the 9C cuts in December cut it by half a million. And now we're in the process for the FY18 budget uh, of trying to increase that. Uh, the House, it came out of the House uh, Ways and Means Committee at $17.5 million. It's now with the Senate. We're hoping that we really would like $20 million. That's really the need. That's what we really feel the need uh, to fulfill um, you know, what we need to provide people at this point. You know, we also feel that given the current climate, we just don't know what's going to happen. Uh, there could be uh, cuts to federal programs that will directly affect the people that we're helping. Uh, there could be cuts to food stamps or qualifications for food stamps. There, there's been talk about cuts to the free um, uh, and reduced lunch programs, which will affect children very badly. And, you know, if this happens, then people are going to turn to the hunger relief system in Massachusetts. And we have to be prepared because we're going to have to fill that gap. By the way, uh, talk about what it means now to fill the gap for unauthorized immigrants because uh, they're not eligible for, you know, the, the government programs mm -hmm. per se. And, and right now, there's, there is certainly, I, I, I would imagine, more anxiety about going anywhere to look for any kind of help. Well, I think that there is, there is you know, anxiety. And we do have, we are hearing from our member agencies. We serve about a ha over 500 member agencies throughout eastern Massachusetts. We serve 190 cities and towns across um, this section of the state. And we are hearing anecdotally from our agencies that people are uh, nervous about coming, but we, we don't discriminate. Anybody can come to the uh, emergency relief system and get food. You know, uh, we don't, there's, there's no entry uh, requirement. You just come, and if you need food, you're going to get it. And finally, people want some more information about what you're doing at the food bank. You've got the website? Yes, it's gbfb.org. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Chris. Stephanie Nichols from the Greater Boston Food Bank. And up ahead, some information about this weekend's Walk for Hunger.